processional hymn is number 231, Praise to the Holiest in the Height. That's number 231. any of you know that opening hymn that was sung as we were processing into the church? Anybody ever hear that before? Raise your hand if you heard it before. Not many, right? It's a song written by St. John Henry Newman, whose feast we celebrate today. And his picture I thought was somewhere. Where is it? Oh, I can't see it. Okay. It's over there. <laughs> That's uh, St. John Henry Newman. And he wrote the hymn. Uh, the, it's really from a poem that he wrote uh, to the Lord. So it's really beautiful. So it's one that we'll get to know a little bit better, but today is also, besides celebrating uh, Sunday, is also the feast day of St. John Henry Newman, who was the founder of the first oratory of St. Philip Neri in the English-speaking world. And he founded the first oratory, the Birmingham Oratory in, in Birmingham, England. And so we sang that song in his honor today. But it's also perfect that today is the feast of St. John Henry Newman, because today, uh, Anthony and Brother Zachary are speaking at all the different masses. Anthony is a candidate for the oratory, and Brother Zachary is one of the novices with Brother Miguel. And so they're going to talk to us a little bit today about their vocation. And don't worry, you're not going to get a talk and my homily. <laughs> we'll just do the talk, and at the homily time we'll have a few moments of silence. I won't hold you hostage all day. Uh, but uh, during, the homily, uh, during the homily time, we'll just have a few moments of silence, and then we'll continue right into the rest of the Mass after the Gospel. But Anthony will speak to us this morning at the very, entrance, at the ver very beginning of the Mass. So let us begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please be seated. everyone awesome so my name is Anthony Gaudino and I've been a parishioner here at st. Anthony's since I was about 11 years old I am from Freehold New Jersey about 30 minutes from here but on January 1st of next year I will be entering formation to become an oratorian here at st. Anthony's with the hopes of being ordained a priest I guess <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I guess I can say that I've grown up around the oratory in the eight years that it has existed here at St. Anthony's. Besides my parents, who were and still are among the best examples that I have had for living a holy and virtuous life, the oratory has been one of the greatest influences in my life and my striving for holiness. Their example was one of the reasons that I felt a call to priesthood when I was around 14 or 15. And around two years ago, 
um, a call to be a priest of the Red Bank Oratory. After reflecting on why I chose the oratory, I can see why I decided to become an oratorian. They are truly, they are truly joyful people, like our founder, St. Philip. They live simply, but also exercise moderation. They act and treat each other like family. And finally, they all strive towards holiness in themselves and in the fellow members of the oratory. I've also felt called to be an oratorian here because of all of you whom I hope to serve. The parish of St. Anthony's has been a model for holiness by the services that they offer to you. Over the years, I've had the pleasure of serving as a sacristan, an altar server, a counselor at Faith Explorers, a teacher for religious education and children's oratory, and a food pantry volunteer. I have also had the opportunity to see up close and personal what being a priest entails by joining them on visits to the sick, anointing of the dying, and helping of the poor. All of this has helped to strengthen my vocation to the priesthood. Now, for the future, it is both the goal of Brother Zachary and I to serve you as priests. Our journeys toward that time are only beginning, and this is why we need your help. As many of you probably know, school can sometimes be very expensive. Um, the, cost of, the cost of college can be a lot of money, and the seminary is no different. As a result, we need your help to help fund our studies to become priests. Our goal is to raise at least $300,000 over the next few years to help fund both me and Brother Zachary's studies for the priesthood, and possibly future members of the oratory who are called to the priesthood. This goal will help me and Brother Zachary finish our studies and other necessities in the next six years as we prepare to serve you. If you can con consider making a sacrificial offering, we would all be most grateful. In addition, you can become a monthly giver to support us, future vocations, and the work of the oratory here at St. Anthony's. We would be very, very grateful for your generosity. And finally, please pray for us that through the fathers and brothers of the oratory, God might form me to be the man and the priest that he wants me to be for you, um, that he wants me to be for you. You are all in my prayers, and I am looking forward to serving you, both as an oratorian and eventually as a priest. God bless you all, and thank you for your generosity and support. Well, thank you, Anthony. Anthony is our first, what we call a homegrown vocation. You know, he's from our parish. And you may not realize, you know, it's a beautiful thing in this parish. When we ask the boys, you know, during, uh, during the summer program, how many of them have thought about being a priest? Guess how many say that they've thought about it? And we have probably 200, 250 uh, boys in our religious education program. About 75% of them say that they've thought at some point about becoming a priest. So we're really blessed in this community. Um, so, and by supporting Anthony and Brother Zachary and the future vocations that come to us, we're also supporting not only young men who are giving up their lives to serve the Lord and giving up everything really uh, to serve the Lord, but we're also supporting the future of our own parish because the oratory, this is the seat of the oratory. And you'll be served by Oratorians until the last one of us is in our grave. So for me, it'll be a lot sooner than for Anthony. <laughs> so they'll be able to serve probably your children and your grandchildren and maybe some of your great-grandchildren. And as we go along, others will follow after, after them as well. So St. Anthony's will go on for a very long time by the grace of God, which is a great blessing, right? You know, that somebody can come here hopefully 100 years from now and come to Mass at St. Anthony's just like you're doing right now. That's a beautiful thing, especially in a time when there is a shortage of priests throughout, throughout the country and throughout the world, that we have that stability and security here at St. Anthony's, you know, because of the, the, the oratory. So today, I asked you, at the end of your pew is a pledge card. If those who are at the end of the, at the end, at the end, can pass the pew cards along to those inside, as well as the pencils at the end. And I ask you to consider what you'll, you're able to do uh, to help 
these young men in their studies for the priesthood uh, and also those who will come after them. If you want to take it home and think about it some more and bring it back to us next week, that's great too. But if you'd like to fill it out this morning, I'm going to give you about four or five minutes to look it over and to fill it out. But we're most grateful uh, to all of you and we're most grateful for, uh, to these young men for making the sacrifice to come among us to serve us. Is everybody ready? I'll ask the ushers to please come forward and collect the cards. If
And brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. from the second book of Kings. Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of Elisha, the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean of his leprosy. Naaman returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before Elisha and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Please accept a gift from your servant. Elisha replied, As the Lord lives whom I serve, I will not take it. And despite Naaman's urging, he still refused. Naaman said, if you will not accept, please let me, your servant, have two mule loads of earth. For I will no longer offer holocaust or sacrifice to any other god except to the Lord. 
The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David? Such is my gospel, for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains, like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord.
with you. I am with you, Spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. And let us present our needs to our Heavenly Father. For the intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop David O'Connell, and for our priests and brothers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the men and boys of our parish, whom God is calling to be priests and brothers, especially in the Red Bank Oratory of St. Philip Neri, <clears throat> and for the women and girls whom God is calling to be sisters, that they have the courage to say yes to him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our novices, Brother Miguel and Brother Zachary, and for our diocesan seminary and Brian Leonard, that the Lord give them the grace of joy and perseverance in their vocations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For husbands and wives and widows and widowers, that they may lead their families to greater holiness and fidelity to Christ and his church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the sick, and those in need, that the Lord may inspire in us new ways of serving him and them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased members of our families and parish, and for those who have no one to pray for them, that our prayers may accompany them as they are prepared for paradise, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Calgora, Babu, Roars, and Father Joseph Gansilla, and for all the special intentions of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, with faith and trust, we place all of our needs in your loving hands. We ask in your kindness and mercy that you please hear and answer us according to your holy will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
At this time, we invite our children to bring their gifts to the altar. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Creator rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, grace and make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. 
that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper is ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. Now, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with our Holy Father, St. Philip Neri, with St. Anthony at Padua, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession 
In your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, Gracie, to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching we dare to say our Father pray from every evil. Grace to grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grace we grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed to those called to supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Communion Antiphon for the 28th Sunday of Ordinary Time can be found on page 246 in the Humans, page number 246.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I just have a couple of announcements, and then we have um, some of our members of the Youth Oratory and the Children's Oratory, or Junior Oratory and Youth Oratory, I think, are going to come up and talk to us for just a couple of, couple of seconds. Uh, so the first announcement is to the generosity of one of our families. We'll be able to provide coats for children whose families could use a little help. Uh, we'll do this similar to how we did the school supply event, where we'll, we'll take the, um, the families, uh, the parents with the, with the children, to come to a, uh, this time a coat store to pick out the coats that they would like to have for their children. Um, and then we have a donor that's going to, uh, is going to uh, help us pay for that. Uh, so that'll be October 29th at 8.30 a.m. If your family could use some help, please sign up at the entrance to the church. Sign your family up for it. If you know somebody that could use some help, make sure they stop by and they uh, just put their name on the uh, sign up in the entrance area. We'll have it for a couple of weeks. That's October 29th at 8.30 a.m. Also today at 2.45 p.m., there'll be a meeting of parents and their children who are interested in our new special needs religious education program for children with special needs. So that's today at 2.45 p.m. If you hadn't signed up before, talk to Father Nick, it's okay. Just show up, just go. Today's an information day. And so now, if you'll just be seated. Oh, and then uh, the blessing, dedication, and organ recital will take place, that's for the, the new refurbished organ, will take place October 16th, at 3 which is next Sunday at 3.30 p.m. It's gonna be fantastic. You won't wanna miss it. You'll really get to hear what this organ is capable of, and it's probably one of the best organs in the entire, at least the entire state. So, um, so next Sunday at 3.30 p.m. Please be seated for a moment while, while, while our children speak. Uh, Good morning, everyone. I'm Nicholas Meza. Um, I'm a part of the um, uh, Junior Oratory. And I just want to let everyone know, like, since there's a lot of kids here, you should come. It's really fun. Like, um, it, it happens at 7 every sat Sunday. And there's snacks, games, and endless fun. We do this and learn about God at the same time. And you can also see your friends. And in my opinion, it's a really good program. I hope to see you later. <laughs> good morning, my name is Cecilia. I'm here today to tell you about the Children's Oratory. In the Children's Oratory, we will learn about God, we have snacks, and we play games. Some of my favorite memories have been when we um, did the floor is lava, the water games, and the summer barbecue. I love going to the Children's Oratory every Sunday, and I hope to see you there. With a sales pitch like that, who'd want to miss it, right? <laughs> the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our essential hymn will be found in the Missal at hymn number 163. I sing the mighty power of God, hymn number 163. 